this dance is about denial. It's about continuing to dance while our world, our home, our future is on fire. It's about our government continuing to approve coal mines and fund gas exploration while declaring a climate emergency. It's about our banks and financial institutions increasing their investments in fossil fuels while seeing the resulting devastations in front of their eyes. And yet, they continue to dance. They ruthlessly defend business as usual while making a few green gestures that would look photogenic with the background of the melting ice of the, pole, of the North Pole. And we are watching this fast and keep dancing to their sweet music too. Why? Well, it's very challenging to engage with reality that seems so overwhelming and depressing. The state of our planet is so alarming that the last report of the IPCC, the UN Intergovernmental Panel of Scientists on Climate Change, declared the situation as code red for humanity. The scope of humanity destroying its only home has never felt more real, with floods, fire, heat waves and droughts devastating every region in the world. This reality is so terrifying that it's tempting to close our eyes and continue to dance ourselves to oblivion. There are two ways to avoid engaging with the environmental crisis. One is denying the severity of the problem and its cause. We might tell ourselves or others, it's not that bad and it's nothing to do with us. This argument has become increasingly difficult to support as 99.9% .9 of scientific papers now agree that climate change is caused by human beings and the devastation is evident not only in poor countries far away from us, but also in the richer ones, including the UK. The other way of stopping ourselves from actively engaging with the crisis is telling ourselves there is no hope. We might say, it's too late. There is nothing we can do about it, or politicians will never listen to us anyway. Oh, I deeply know these feelings of despair. Why wouldn't we give up when the world is crumbling in front of our eyes and governments and businesses continue to harm the planet? For me, the answer has two parts. One, we owe it to our children and to poorer countries that suffer the consequences of our actions to do whatever we can not only because our generation is knowingly continuing the harm, but because in fighting the world, for the world, we show them that we care. It's an act of love towards everything and everyone we cherish. Two, all the scientists that warn us about the grave situation agree that there is still a lot that can be done to prevent the worst of climate breakdown. There are amazing technology out there and in incredible minds that work on anything from alternative ways of creating energy to bacteria that eat plastic. What is missing is a leadership that would choose to invest in the technologies and divest in green technologies and divest from the fossil fuels and other fossil heavy industries. It's not too late. It's just that the, the current system isn't working. A government that receives regular donations from fossil fuels industry doesn't seem willing to make the necessary decision to protect humanity. It's not their priority. We desperately need a change. And to push for a change, everyone's voice is needed. You might feel disempowered and alone facing this huge challenge, but you are not alone. In recent international survey led by Bath University, 83% of young people said that humanity has failed to care for the planet, and two-thirds reported feeling sad, afraid and anxious. Many felt ignored and betrayed by politicians and adults. This is on us. Another research 
by SEC Newsgate, published last week ahead of COP26, found that 71% of adults in the UK define climate change as their top concern. 71%. We are not alone in this. We are not a few and we are not helpless. Imagine 71% of us writing to our MPs and signing petitions. Imagine 71% of us going to demonstrations. Imagine 71% of us changing who we bank with and buy electricity from. Imagine 71% of us changing our shopping, eating and travel habits. We could be a force to reckon with. Politicians, financiers, corporates and the media will have to change. We don't know what's going to happen in Glasgow. But while the government say they want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and look after our world, they have approved the Mozambique gas project, Cambo oil field, Horse Hill project and the coal mine in Cumbria. Last week the government voted down an amendment that would help restrict the use of pesticides to protect pollinators. And that's not the behavior of a government committed to save us all from a catastrophic climate breakdown. Worryingly, a look at the country's emissions targets for COP26 adds up to a 16.3% increase in global emissions by 2030, not the 50% decrease required to keep us to 1.5 degrees warming. But whatever happens in COP26, we will need to hold the government and the corporates that profit from wrecking the planet to account. What part are you going to take? You can choose to make a difference. Refuse to be silenced. Talk about it to your friends. Shout about it in the streets. Sing it, paint it, tweet it. The world needs you to add your voice and heart and take a stance.